Today we're going to continue talking a little bit about graphing, except we're not going to use our calculator. We're going to do most of this by hand. Uh, we're going to look at parent functions and piecewise functions. First topic, parent functions. These are basically the most stripped down versions of general functions. And we're going to look at, I think, five or six basic functions and take a look at the patterns generated by these functions. So our first is a squared function, which is a parabola. Uh, if we want to look at a pattern generated by this, I typically make up an XY table. And uh, I usually use smaller numbers, so 0, 1, and 2, negative 1, and negative 2. So we get 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, negative 1, positive 1, and negative 2, positive 4. So if I graph that, get a parabolic figure. Of something like this. And all parabolas are going to have this general shape and form, some kind of a U figure. All right. We talk about a domain and range of this. This goes on forever, both in the horizontal, positive, and negative direction, so our domain is all reals and our range. We notice that this never drops below the axis. So for this problem, our range is y values greater than or equal to zero. If I look at an x cubed fun function, again, I'm going to take and look at the general pattern created by this. I go negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 again. If I plug in a negative 2, I get out a negative 8, followed by negative 1, 0, 1, and 8. This creates a general cubic figure. 2, 4, 6, 8, negative 1, and 2, 4, 6, 8. And most cubic figures will take on some form of this shape. We go to our next figure, which is an absolute value. Again, plugging in some small numbers. Let's go negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 again. Get out 2, 1, 0, 1, 2. As you can see, This takes on linear shapes on both sides, unlike the parabola, which is curved. This is straight, and it creates some form of a V pattern. Okay, Let's go back to our previous example since I didn't do domain and range. Since this will go forever, left and right, and up and down, the domain is all reals. And the range is all reals. For our absolute value, the domain, we notice it goes left and right in all directions. So we have all reals here. But our range, we're talking about our y values. So y is greater than or equal to 0 once again. Square root, we know that Negative values are undefined in a square root, so we might as well not even plug those in. Start at 0, 1, and rather than picking 2, because I don't really know what the square root of 2 is, I'm going to pick perfect squares. So we'll go 4 and 9. So I get 0, 1, 2, and 3 is my output values. 0, 1, over 4, 2, over 9, and up 3. So I get a slanted curved figure, something like this. Domain, in this case, my x's are limited. So I'm starting at 0 and going to the right forever. So I just say it's x is greater than or equal to 0 for my domain. And my ranges are limited as well. And y is greater than or equal to 0. 
cube root. So now what we want to do is we want to pick numbers such that when I multiply a number by itself three times, I get that number out. So my perfect cubes are going to be negative 8, negative 1, 0, 1, and 8. Cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. Cube root of negative 1 is negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. When I graph this, takes on the following shape, 2, 4, 6, 8, we get something similar to this figure, all right, and as you notice it goes left and right forever, so the domain is all reals, and the range, believe it or not, this will go up forever and down forever as I get bigger, my cube roots get bigger, so this is all reals as well. And those are our parent functions. These are going to come back in a few days, and we're going to be doing some other things with these. So it's good to know how to generate those general patterns. Next, here's what I want to do. I want to graph on an xy coordinate axis the graph of y equals 2, but only when x is greater than or equal to 5. Well, Here's x is equal to 5, and y is equal to 2 would be somewhere around here. And if it's equal to 5, I put a closed dot. And y equals 2 would normally be a horizontal line, but this is only to be graphed when x is greater than 5. So this is going to be my line. Now, what I'm getting at here is I'm graphing a certain function over a general specified period of time, that period time reflects what x is equal to. This brings us to a concept of what we call piecewise function. This is typically how a piecewise function is written, and what it asks us to do is take and graph the following y values, these are your y values here, when your x values are equivalent to the following ranges. So I'm going to do this on an xy axis, I'm going to find out when x is less than or equal to 4, so here's 1, 2, 3, 4. Since it can't equal 4, I can't really put a filled in dot there, so if you remember from our inequality studies in algebra 1 and 2, we run an open circle. And then y is equal to 3 anytime x is less than or equal to 4. So that line is going to be a horizontal line in this case. When x is equal to 4, y is going to equal negative 5. So I go down to negative 5. I can put a filled in dot since it's equal to. I go to, whoops, screwed that up, didn't I? When x is less than or equal to 4, that's a filled in dot. When x is greater than 4, open circle, in fact, let's just erase that. Got a little ahead of myself, sorry about that. So when x is greater than 4, y equals negative 5. That's an open circle. And I can go until x is less than 6. So again, it's not included. I open circle it and then connect the two dots. Finally, when x is bigger than or equal to 6, y is equal to 2. Since it's included, I can fill in the circle and graph a horizontal line going to the right. This is the easiest of the piecewise functions to graph, but get much more complicated as we move on throughout the year. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph a series of linear functions with slopes in a piecewise function, and then I'm going to evaluate that piecewise function when the x value is equal to 8. Let's graph first. So in this case, I want to graph when x is less than 1. So I'm going to start by using an open circle somewhere. Now there's a couple of ways to get this problem done. What I like doing is saying, well, if my x is equal to 1, what's my y equal to? Well, we know these are going to generate our y values. 
So what is my y value when x is equal to 1? Plug it into this function. That would give me a total of 7. But it can't equal 7 since x is less than 1. So I go up to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And I put an open circle. Now, there's a little hint in this problem. This is in slope-intercept form. So 5 is my y-intercept. And it's in the included range, so I can just fill in that circle and draw a graph. You'll notice this is a positively sloped line as I go from left to right. And I go until I get to 1, but not included. Now I'm going to graph a horizontal line of y equals 1 when x is between 1 and 3, both included. So here's 1, 1, and 1, 3, and I connect the dots. Notice the dots are filled in because 1 and 3 are included in the interval. Lastly, I want to know what's going on when x is greater than 3. So again, I want to know the y value when x is equal to 3. So I take here f of 3 and say 3 is equal to x. Therefore, I get a positive 3 out. Since 3 is not included in the interval, I run an open circle. And in this case, I have a slope of negative 1. So from here, I go down 1 and over 1, put a dot and graph, and there's my line. Lastly, we want to evaluate this function when f or when x is equal to 8. So I look up here and I have three different equations I can plug this into, but the only one it makes sense for is this third one, because this third equation applies to all x values greater than or equal to 3, and 8 is greater than or equal to 3. So f of 8 is equal to negative 8 plus 6 or negative 2. Let's do another problem. So I have a situation where I have two lines now that both have slopes, neither of which has a horizontal line associated with it. In the first case, I want to find the value where f of x, or x is equal to 6, plug 6 into the equation in the top, and I notice I get 12 over 3, or 4, plus 4 is 8. So if I move over to 6, and I go up 8, I get an open circle. And then once again, I can choose to go to my y-intercept, since that's in my stated interval. And I could plug the point 4 in, or I could go down 2, back 3. It doesn't really matter. But if I connect the dots, there's the graph of the first interval of my equation. Then I want to plug 6 into my second equation. This gives me 6 over 2, multiplied by a negative, which is a negative 3. And I take negative 3, add it to 5, I get 2. So at 6 here, I get a filled-in value, 2. And then I'm going to graph a slope of negative one half. Now if I go up one over two, that's a positive slope. So I need to go down one over two, put a dot, and graph. Finally, I need to evaluate the function at x equals negative nine. At x equals negative nine, my interval that I need to talk about is this top equation. So what I've got is two thirds times negative 9 plus 4. This gets me negative 6 plus 4 or negative 2. 
little bit different spin on this. We want to actually write a piecewise function based on the curve we have here. Well, those are a couple easy parts to this. This horizontal line is probably the easiest, and that's graphed when x is strictly greater than 2. You'll notice the open circle. And it's a horizontal line, which means it's a y equals a constant, and that constant value in this case is 3. Now, if you look at this middle function, okay, the middle function goes from 2 at its high point, and it's included, to negative 1 at its low point, which is included for x. And this looks exactly like a parabola. Notice over 1, up 1, over 2, up 4, over 1, up 1. So in this case, this is the function of x squared from negative 1 to 2. Lastly, we have some kind of line. And I'm not really sure of this line's equation. I have an idea of the slope. I can calculate that. If we look, I go 1, 1 over, and this is a positive slope, so I know I have a slope of 1x. And y-intercept I don't really have since so it doesn't connect. But what I can do is I can say, well, I know that y equals x plus b, and I know a couple of things. I know this goes through the point negative 2, 0. I could plug that in, but it also goes through the point negative 1, 1. I could plug that in and get my y-intercept. It doesn't really matter which one you choose. Let's just use negative 1 and 1. Negative 1 for x and 1 for y is going to yield a b value. So b in this case is 2, and x plus 2 is the equation of the line when x in this case is less than negative 1. Now you'll notice I use strictly less than because in the previous or in the the uh, equation following I used x is less than or equal to. If I were to say x is less than or equal to both it wouldn't be a function because in theory two things would go through the same point thus not passing a vertical line test. So one's got to be included, one has to be not included if I have an open circle there at the same point. And that's all we've got. Fill out the summary form, go to my math lab, do the assigned questions. See you tomorrow.